In today's photo deconstruction, I'm going to show you all the different creative elements that went together to make this disco inspired beauty shoot. We've got colorful LED lights, a star filter, creative background, and color grading. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here. One of the things I love about creative lighting techniques is that you can mix and match them. Once you add one into your photographic toolkit, you can add another and then start creating endless possibilities. So when I approach a shoot, I'm not in my head thinking, okay, here's the exact lighting setup I'm going to use. But instead I, I think, okay, what's the mood I'm going for, the vibe? What creative tools and techniques can I mix together to, to make this have the most impact? And so that's what you see today in this disco inspired image. Now this shot was actually as part of my fashion intensive workshop. I run these workshops a couple times a year. By the way, if you want to join, go to learnwithlindsay.com to the workshop section. They always sell out, so you're definitely going to want to grab a seat. Uh, and so in this shot, I wanted to show you how I would create an image that was more of an editorial look. And so it was originally inspired by the wardrobe, by her dress. And so I'm looking at it thinking, how does that feel to me? What kind of vibe could I create? And I, I was looking at the model and she had this beautiful afro and I said, let's do something that is 70s inspired. So to build this shoot, I actually went upstairs and I went into my prop closet and I found these curtains that I had hanging back there. I'd actually use them for a holiday shoot. They're these really inexpensive uh, fringe curtains. I think they were $12 from Amazon. And I knew that they would catch the light just right and give me that disco vibe. So we set up the background. I asked my makeup artist to give me kind of a, a 70s looking eye makeup. And then for the hairstylist, I said, let's, let's fill out that fro. Let's really lean into the disco. So as you can see, I led with the concept based on the wardrobe. So I led with that concept and then all of my team brought it together. And then it was time for the lighting. So let's take a look behind the scenes at the light. All right, so for this set, I mixed a variety of tools. I used both strobes and continuous lights. All right, so let's start with our main light. The main light I have on the subject's face is a strobe, it was a Profoto D2, and I had on it a 10 degree grid. So basically what that would do is it would give me concentrated white light, basically on her face and a little bit on her torso. So it would freeze her in place, it would make the light poppy, a little bit more specular. All right, so that's the main light. But then what I wanted to do is I really wanted that fringe in the background to sparkle, but I wanted to sparkle with different colors. So that's where I introduced my Nanlite Pavo tube. So I actually have three in this shot. I have a Pavo tube on the left that is pink, and then I have one over her hair, and then another one on the side that are orange. There's three Pavo tubes in total. Now Pavo tubes are these long uh, LED light tubes that you can change to any color that you want. So it was nice because since they're continuous lights, it's what you see is what you get. So we were you know, slowly dialing them in until we got the right color theory. So what we decided is to play around with pinks and oranges and, and those sorts of hues. All right, so we've got our 10 degree grid on her, the face. We have a pink light that is spilling on the side of the subject as a rim light and then also spilling on the background the orange acting as a rim light and hair light, and then a little bit of the orange on the right also spilling onto the background. Okay, so then there is one more strobe here. In the front right-hand side of the frame, we added a strobe with a pink gel. This, the shadows were looking a little too dark and we wanted to unite the colors on the subject with the background so the pink gel was able to do this. And before I show you what we captured in camera versus what I did in post, I wanna talk a little bit about my camera. I was shooting the Canon R5 and I used the Canon RF 70 to 200 2.8. I purposely grabbed this lens for two reasons. First of all, I didn't want the curtain in the background and the sparkles to be distracting. I wanted them to be out of focus. So I could achieve this in two ways. First of all, by grabbing that 70 to 200, I could go to 2.8 and use a wider aperture to kick it out of focus. And then I could back up further from the model and use a longer focal length, which will make the background go even more out of focus. So in the final image, you can see that it's just beautiful bokeh, like this beautiful texture of light. I didn't want it to be crisp and in focus because it would be quite competitive with her. And so my camera settings I ended up with was 1 1 60th of a second, f2.8, ISO 400. So the aperture in this scene was very important. Often when I'm shooting in the studio, if I'm shooting with strobes, I'm not shooting wide open. I'm usually shooting more like f11, unless there is a specific reason, like I want the background to be more out of focus. So there's one more thing you don't see in this shot. For this image, I was using a Tiffin 77 millimeter thread size filter. 
the filter I was using was a star filter, particularly the four point star filter. And so when we pop over to the final image and you take a look at her dress, I just thought that this gave us really like leaning into the disco vibes, having the little starburst effect on the dress. It's subtle, uh, but I think it adds a nice extra layer. Okay, so now, since I really wanted this to have the feel of something that was vintage, something that was a little aged, something from the past, I wanted to change the color so it didn't seem quite as rooted in reality or in modern day. So this is what the final image looked like, but I wanna show you what we captured in camera. So this was the original shot. And I still think it's beautiful, right? Like, she, I mean, her, her, that makeup is incredible. Her features are gorgeous. Uh, but looking at it, it's, it's not quite, toned the way I want it to be. I want it to be a little darker and more mysterious. I want the colors to look a little bit more vintage. So this is what I captured in camera. And then in capture one, what I did is I added a yellow orange to the highlight, so her skin tone, and then I added a magenta to the shadows. So what I was doing is I was picking up on the colors I was already using, right? I had some orange nan lights and I also had a pink nan light. So I did yellow orange to her face and then the pink magenta to the shadows. So here's raw and here was my color grade. So I started to really play around with that. And I think this starts to look more filmic. It looks more like vintage or aged film. And then looking at her, it's not like there's much that needs to be retouched, right? Maybe like a little bit around the eyes. She has absolutely stunning skin. Uh, but I noticed that there's some sparkles missing lower uh, on the, the fringe in the background. And then maybe there's some spots it was missing. Uh, I'd actually already used this curtain before and so it had kind of fallen apart, which was another reason I wanted to add a focus in the background. Uh, so I, I did want to make a few tweaks. So here's what I did with my retouching. So you can see that the background got cleaned up a little bit smooth out the skin just a tiny bit, and then I got rid of a couple uh, distracting reflections, but it's pretty close. So really the biggest change before, between in camera and the final shot was in the color grading and achieving the right mood for this disco shot. Well, I don't know about you, but I love this image. This is something that's a little different in my book. I have some things with disco vibe, but this, this model inspired me, the dress, and I love how it came together. By the way, if you want to be able to join me for these workshops, don't forget to check the links in the description below. And if you wanna see the gear that I used here, maybe pick some up, be sure to visit Adorama. And I've got each one of the pieces of gear listed in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this photo deconstruction and I will see you guys next time.